Welcome to Threat Talks. Let's delve deep into the dynamic world of cybersecurity. Imagine this, half of your staff is doing nothing today and it's a working day. Or the other way around, everybody's being flooded with messages, phone calls, emails, all kinds of complaints. Why? Your e-commerce site is malfunctioning terribly slow, so you have, well, very unhappy customers. Those could be signs of a DDoS attack, and this, these happen a lot, so that's the subject of today. We're going to talk about what they are, what you can do to fend them off, um, and uh, what the special relationship between those attacks and cybersecurity is. Thank you for joining. My name is Liu Jan Koning. I'm CTO of Ontoit. Today, from the Security Operations Center floor uh, at our headquarters, uh, we present to you Threat Talks, and the subject of today is DDoS. Let's get on to it. Let me first welcome our guests. Um, Peter van Burgel, uh, he's the CEO of M6, welcome. Thank you. Um, M6 is one of the largest internet exchanges in the world. So if we're talking bandwidth, we need to talk to Peter. Um, so what's the, how, how many times does this happen at DDoS? So uh, that's a very layered question. When we talk globally, it happens hundreds, thousands of times a day. Uh, for us specifically, it's at least once, twice a week. Just so for you, often, for yeah. your... Own, yeah. own environment. Yeah, so a lot. A lot. I say a lot, yeah. Um, our other guest, Luca Cipriano, he's a threat intel specialist at Ontuit. He has the gift to explain very difficult things to ordinary people, and we kind of need that today. So welcome, uh, uh, Luca. Uh, suppose you were going to launch an attack, a DDoS attack to someone. Uh, what kind of equipment would you actually use to launch it from? Uh, well, I wouldn't, first of all. I know you're a good <laughs> But boy, yeah. uh, if I had to, uh, I would probably go to the dark web and rent a botnet, an existing botnet. That would be the most efficient, I would say. Apparently there's money to be made in this business. Okay, right. in this episode, uh, next to what we just talked about, uh, we're going to talk about the Mirai botnet. Uh, that's, a, that's a very active one. It's a, it's a big one. It brought down countries. It brought down Twitter, Amazon. So it's, um, it, it's a heavy one. Um, we're also going to talk about another attack, the HTTP2 rapid reset attack. And that's special because it's it's about a flaw in a protocol that we can't really fix. So how do we defend ourselves from that? And then lastly, are my favorite actually, it's a DNS reflection amplification attacks. Um, and that's like um, if I want to win a snow fight with uh, with Luca, uh, instead of throwing a, a ball of snow at him, I would actually throw that same ball of snow uh, on the rooftop that he's right below at. And, and then all the snow of the whole roof actually pours on top of him and then I, I'll easily win. So Better not messing with you, huh? <laughs> Uh, yeah, well, but not, you you know you know better how this works. So I don't. Let's not do. Let's agree not to do a, 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 a such a thing. There's going to be uh, infographics about the things we talk in the show notes available. Um, and at the end of uh, of this thread talk, I'll uh, dive a little bit further into that. And since we are live, um, uh, feel free to ask us questions. If you put them in the chat, uh, as long as we do not suffer a DDoS attack today, uh, they will arrive at uh, Lucas' uh, computer and he'll uh, bring them in for you. And especially at the end, we'll have some time uh, to answer them. Peter, uh, DDoS is a serious business, huh? I mean, uh, uh, you are, of course, you, you are a connector, uh, 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 technical networks that, uh, that need to be connected within M6, so you have a lot to deal with it. I also understood you're not doing this alone, you form coalitions, so yeah. it's everywhere, right? Can you yes. explain how that works? Yeah, so like I said um, uh, in your opening question, it happens a lot, it happens daily, and it happens uh, multiple times a day. Uh, and and then, and there's two types, roughly. There's a what they call volumetric, so there's a lot of data that is flooding your network, and there's very complex ones that are not so much large in size, but they're very complex in what they call factoring. Uh, <clears throat> and because of that complexity or the or the the number of uh, or the volume of uh, the attack, it's very difficult to do that alone. Specifically in the size of of data and and traffic we deal with, so that's uh, that's why we work together. So we work together uh, for two reasons: to actually agree standards and come up with new technologies. Yeah, you mentioned the HTTP uh, attack just now with the snowball example, and we need to develop an answer to that. So that's why you work in coalition because more no. More people know more than one. That's one. But the other thing is also, it can really be that the attack is so complex or so large that you simply cannot deal with it yourself or just yourself. So that's why you then work with, for example, <clears throat> we work also with partners like uh, NAWAS in the Netherlands, the NBIP organization, to uh, to fight off these attacks. 
So it's really uh, for those two reasons, coming up with answers, but also really being able to, to find it out. So you're talking about a coalition, right? You specifically don't say like a company that you rent some kind of, uh, we, we know the cloud ser- big cloud services that yeah. sell uh, anti DDoS services, but you chose to do it at least also in a different way. Is yeah. that is that How is that different? Yeah, so we do have our own solutions. So we have products and solutions, technology that we use to fight off our own um, attacks as well. But this, uh, this organization, NBIP, is an organization that basically represents all the service providers, internet service providers in the Netherlands and more and more internationally. And they basically set up this, uh, this anti-scrubbing or clearinghouse service called uh, NABAS. And the reason being, the equipment you need to do that, specifically for the larger attacks or the very complex attacks, is, is very expensive. So not every service provider is capable of paying that or, or doing that investment. So by actually working together, you share the cost, but you can also share the benefit. So service providers wanting to offer a good, secure connection to their customers can make use of this service, which you can then, of course, share the cost as well. So that's one benefit, why we work together with them. The other benefit is that they are also much more forthcoming in sharing information about these attacks. And by sharing and caring is that you can also work together to actually come up with better solutions to uh, to prevent, first and foremost, but when it happens, also fight off these attacks. Mm-hmm. And I'm not saying that commercial companies are, are bad at that or it's wrong that they, that they want to make money. It's just a different model whereby uh, in this coalition, it's a bit more about the greater good and working together than it is about, quote unquote, uh, making money. I guess, I guess at the end of the day, the end goal of a company, uh, if it's a commercial company, uh, they need to make money yeah, as absolutely. well. Yeah. And uh, it doesn't matter how motivated uh, engineers are because everybody loves their job. But of course, the end goals are different. Yeah, so, uh, yeah and that's it. So uh, nothing wrong about the companies, of course, that, that do this on a commercial basis. I mean, NBIP needs to make money yeah, they, because they need to make these investments as well. So it's, it's not uh, for free. But it's a, it's a different start. And it's more I think, like a joint venture <clears throat> kind of. Well, it's an association uh, in Dutch terms, a vereniging. But uh, it also goes back a little bit to the beginning of the internet, where uh, it was much more uh, built by, by sort of the techies and, uh, and about sharing. And it came from the university side of things. So that sort of philosophy of, yeah. uh, of uh, greater good and community is very much part of that association as well. And so are we. Hence, working together with them, but also leveraging commercial technology to, uh, to, uh, yeah, to fight off DDoS. You mentioned uh, the volume attacks, huh? so DDoS. Uh, you were you, you are going to explain us the difficult things today, huh, Luca? Yeah, yeah, of course. Can you explain what <laughs> so what is this DDoS? Um, what does it stand for? I How guess, does it work? Yeah, I guess do... first we need to start with explaining what is a DDoS for maybe some uh, people that are following the podcast and they don't know uh, what it is. So it, uh, DDoS stands for denial distributed uh, sorry distributed denial of service <laughs> yes <laughs> and uh, attack and. Um, Basically, uh, it is uh, the the, uh, the uh, end goal of this attack. It will be to um, create an issue, uh, for example, on a company on a website to make it un- unreachable or to flood the network, uh, uh, creating a problem for the company. For example, there are different kind of. Uh, so, so, so they, what they do is they send a lot of traffic to. Yeah, the, and you can't handle it. Right? Uh, that's what I, uh, I was mentioning. There are different kind of uh, attacks, uh, as uh, also Peter mentioned uh, before, uh, could be done, uh, like for example exploiting a, a flow in a protocol that we're going to talk later or it can be like with by volumetric with sending a lot of different uh, yeah, but the traffic. easiest probably is the, 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 just by the numbers of traffic I mean if you throw enough traffic at you yeah then you'll die yeah? that's so, the easiest it's a bit, is that, but, is that but, comparable to uh, I remember in the old days when I wanted to uh, buy, buy tickets for my f- favorite uh, uh, artist <laughs> and then uh, the ticket selling company was down and that was not because yeah, of Adidas no, that was because everybody wanted to buy yeah, we were like, like you a, yeah. <laughs> exactly I was, so, I was the attacker. It, it was uh, not, yeah. n- not a malicious so that, but then an even larger. It was scale, a DDoS, right? yeah, but not malicious. Yeah. Um, and actually, uh, for example, uh, uh, for this kind of attack, of course, uh, as they are the easiest, they're also uh, easier than the other kind of attacks to to, to prevent. Uh, mm-hmm. But like, for example, there are also uh, stress tests online that can be used uh, to test your network. That can be abused also to have like uh, a DDoS attack uh, on a target. There's like, for example, an open source uh, uh, program that is called. Called uh, low orbit ion cannon, uh, which everybody can download and use it, and basically you set up some uh, well the, the target which port do you want. You just push a button and it fires. Is, is this traffic. legal? 
it, it is legal done on your own network if you yeah, want to it. test your network. But in the past, this has been used, for example, by a bunch of people uh, all together online on one IRC chat and say, hey, at eight, we're going to start to target him. And everybody was like, yeah, fire, boom, boom, boom. And so so it's, it's uh, maybe two things. So the ticket example is actually a really good one because in the old days, you couldn't get through. Right, so it was really uh, whether you were on the phone or, or on the internet, you really couldn't get through. Now, you see, you can't get through, but you get into a queue, right? So they've grown yeah. up as well. So they've changed their way of working, in the sense that you can still go through and you can still do the transaction with them. I mean, it's annoying sitting there in the queue uh, waiting for that wheel of despair to finish. They've all been there. But uh, <laughs> but it's uh, at least you get through and you have you you stand a chance to actually complete the transaction. And for them selling the tickets, their business is still online. The, the thing with DDoS is if you don't prepare, you get back to that old situation where you cannot get through, they cannot sell the tickets, so there is a financial loss. No. Uh, and that's why it's so important to figure out how to deal with it, because otherwise you're, yeah, you potentially go out of business. Yeah. Well, what's the fun in this? I mean, why would anyone do this? I mean, <laughs> we, we put so much effort in funding the North. I mean, it, it's not just fun, probably. Right? No, so... I mean, in the, uh, we talk about this as if it's a separate thing, right? The, the, the cyberspace and then cyber threats and all these things, but it's, it's crime. Or it's, uh, in, if we, when you talk nation states, it's things like espionage. Yeah. And that happens in real life and your car can get stolen or, uh, or uh, your house can get broken into. And the same thing is happening online. It's happening in cyberspace. And DDoS is one of the ways to actually either get into your house or, or uh, stop others from getting in and uh, barricading your shop so people can't buy your product. So, so, uh, so but by then doing online, a DDoS attack, it's not just you, you overwhelm something that it's down, but you can also get into it like a, in a, from a cyber security hacking way, right? How? Uh, well, uh, for example, you could bring down a defensive measure that uh, um, a company has and uh, then, for example, uh, use that as an uh, entry point, mm -hmm. uh, creating a, a denial of service there. Um, but also, so I you would attack say, this protection, and the protection goes goes down, and then you can walk in. That's what you're. Saying. Yes, basically, it depends what you're attacking, but uh, yeah. that's the, the and 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 terms, of course yeah. on your uh, prevention, yeah, because some equipment will just lock, yeah. and the the gate will go down and stay down, and others will go ah fuck give up. Yeah, and just then you're let in. Everything, yeah, actually, uh, let we, everything through. I have a lot of uh, uh, discussions with customers about this. It's it's the, it's the traditional debate between availability and security. Yeah. 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 And then basically, if if so, if a firewall, for example, gets too much overwhelmed with lots of new sessions, then pass on the traffic, fill open. Yeah. And yeah. I think that's a really bad idea because, especially in these kind of situations, yeah. you get a lot yeah. of traffic and, and they then mix uh, it with an extra thing, and then, and, uh, and then yeah. it, God knows what happens. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. And also back to your question, right? Is it fun? Uh, well, maybe somebody thinks it's fun, but at least it's a business model. Right. So again, why? So would how you... do I make money? <clears throat> well, the question is, if you want to go, yeah. if you want to go down that path. But the business model, I'd of course, like to stay free. So no, but no, but I think you're making <laughs> money actually trying to fend it off. So uh, that that may be a good uh, career choice as well. However, uh, there, it is a business model in a sense that again, also regular crime is a business model, right? Why do we have all these troubles in in the harbor with drugs and things like that? Yeah, okay, but if I would jam the A2, I mean, it's good for uh, protest, maybe. Uh, so well, but again, that's that's a purpose, right? So it could be, it could actually. But be. how can I make money? Well, well, stuff? Uh, well, you can make money for two in in two ways, right? You can make money because you, if you can get in, as we just discussed, and you may able may be able to steal secrets, you can sell those secrets. So that's one way of, of making money, but it could also be extortion. So if you if you constantly flood a website and you want that to stop, then you have to pay some money and they stop yeah. attacking you, for example, right? So there's different ways but uh, also to make money. Imagine, for example, two companies' competitors, and uh, you know we, there's also espionage be for, uh, between companies. And for example, can you imagine uh, how, man, how, many, how much money a company will lose if they uh, are not reachable online, their website, people can't buy from them, etc. So it creates uh, a problem. That's something that also a competitor could leverage. Yeah, so so the, the situation would then be uh, that your IT team is running around frantically. What are we going to do? Yeah. And then you get a phone call. Hey, if you pay me, I'll make it stop. That kind of thing. Yeah, or just yeah. simply let them make it not work a website where they can buy the, the latest uh, new product that come out that day, for example. Mm -hmm. So nobody is uh, can access the, the website and can buy the product. Mm -hmm. That creates a problem also with, uh, I guess, investors, because of course... Yeah, I mean, let's not forget uh, uh, image. Yeah? So uh, indeed, if you're under attack and if you're, uh, or if you're a bank, right? Part of, of the service of being a bank is that you sell trust. Well, if your network is being hacked all the time or is unavailable or is, what does it do to the trust, right? If you can't even keep the yeah. application up, do I trust you with my money? 
So yes, there's there's definitely ways uh, to think about this as a business model, and that's why there's uh, it's happening so often because many people think they can make money or they can just you know uh, be annoying to somebody else. Let's not forget it's not always about money. It could also be about pride or or that's getting actually, back. That's actually uh, fun that you mentioned that because <clears throat> I've heard stories where bank had like uh, zero days CVEs and uh, some attackers were slowly draining a little bit of money, but those banks decided not to publish that they had a CVE and then wait until it was uh, patched and fixed and let the attacker draw mo uh, drain money uh, slowly because that it will recover the image because then you, you will not trust the bank anymore. Uh, and we talked about it uh, before separately is that, for example, also in the gaming uh, industry, uh, gaming is big business and it's about winning, it's, it's, it's sportsmanship, it's things like that. But sometimes, uh, yeah, if you want to win, you can play uh, not by the rules, right? And if you do uh, some attack on the others and they get slow, hey, if your bullet arrives first, right, you, you, you win the shooting match. So I read an article from the FBI that, that stated that uh, the, the, the majority of all uh, DDoS attacks are actually game-related, so a feud between gamers. I'm not surprised. Uh, There's a lot of money involved nowadays in the gaming yeah. industry, in the competitions, and Bigger of course it's a big advantage creating latency in the, in the game of the If opponent. there's big money to be made, there's yeah. always going to be somebody trying to... Uh, Yes. To take advantage of that, and, and that's where they can use DDoS. Before we go into examples, uh, mm -hmm. how do we solve this? I mean, you mentioned the, uh, the, the coalitions that you can do, cloud service that you can do. Well, how, how does that, how do we fend it off? How, because, yeah, what, what, should, what can well, I do? Well, it's uh, in, in, uh, in one word, preparation, mm -hmm. right? Uh, but the preparation, of course, has multiple layers. So first of all, uh, like with any... Uh, or security in general, you need to think about this like you're securing your house or any asset you have. So you also need to think about this uh, in, the, in the online space, so firewalling and all these things, patching and what have you. A simple thing that, that a lot of uh, companies forget is make sure your backup works well and not just backing it up, but also being able to restore it. Because if you're being hacked or if you're being ransomware or under attack and something breaks, you can at least go back to what you had mm -hmm. and restart. Yeah. So really think about that as well. Let's not forget about that. And then, yeah, like we have, and, and many other companies, of course, have, is you put in place measures. So we have our own. And then if that's not sufficient, like we talked about earlier, we can go to companies like Navas or organizations like Navas or commercial services and, uh, and together with them fight off the attack. And to your point, uh, remain available, maybe at a, at a degraded fashion, but you're still available and reachable, et cetera. But you're fighting off this attack uh, while you're keeping your service up and running. So it's, it's a combination of preparation and, and really think this through and work with companies like, like ours and, and others to, uh, to, to make sure you have the solutions in place and practice. Yeah. yeah, well, we got our practice. Uh, I, mean, I remember it was years ago, but the first time we actually uh, got to deal with uh, DDoS, um, they were actually attacking our DNS servers, mm -hmm. and uh, we hosted that ourselves. And uh, uh, well, we we're, luckily we have equipment that we can tune, everything, but it requires tuning. I mean, yes. attackers learn and they try different things. They they move their attacks somewhere else. So we were it was like a cat and mouse kind of thing, and we were like uh, the third night in a row where we were. Uh, uh, working till 3 a.m. or so, we were like, well, let, well, how we can structurally change this? And since then, uh, things like putting your <coughs> DNS in a surface that is in a an area where there's huge available bandwidth and specific for DNS uh, measures. Uh, and and, there's, and there's, there's, sorry, yeah, there's two or three things to go with that. So first of all, is uh, we, we, you, but also us, we, we're companies that are aware of this. So we, we are preparing and we are trying to fight it off. Also, because I think we both believe we are likely targets. Right? People know us, we're known companies, or if you're a security company, let's give it a try, right? So, mm -hmm. But it's not like that anymore, or or not often. So these attacks are not necessarily targeted per se. They don't sit there and go, okay, who are we going to attack? They have programs running that mm -hmm. search for vulnerabilities, and then they go, oh, I see something there, let's start mm -hmm. pulling or scratching yeah. or whatever. So also for many companies potentially listening, is you may think you're not a target, but anybody can be a target because they're just trying every door. And if the door goes, then they'll give it a try. And if it's you... And you can always be a target from uh, different uh, sides, as we will talk about yeah. botnet. Uh, so you yeah. could be a target in a way that you will participate to attacks and you don't Yeah, without know even knowing it. it. Yeah, true. Yeah, yeah good so, point. Yeah, we're going to talk about that. And we're going to talk about uh, Mira in a minute. Yes. One, one last thing. I mean, there's, we didn't talk much about nation states that attack each other. No. Right? Countries bringing countries down. We have seen the, the war in Ukraine, of course. Um, that must be worrying as well. And and yes. and, and we have uh, in every country basically as as as, uh, as critical infrastructure uh, like uh, utilities and stuff. Yeah. Um, 
Is that an area of concern at all? There? Yes. Yeah, absolutely. So again, like in the real world, right, there's espionage and uh, James Bond stuff and uh, what have you, but that also happens online. And um, um, uh, uh, there is, uh, do we call it a cyber war? I don't know, but at least there's nation, <laughs> there's, Asian, there, there's definitely nation states are, of course, trying to do this because yes. it's a bit more stealthy, right? So there's a good chance that it's not even uh, detected. But if it is, then, okay, it's a cyber attack. It's not bullets flying. And uh, yeah, it's hard to call Article 5 of NATO, for example. Because exactly. Is yeah. there a clear act of war? Is no, exactly. Yeah. So, but in, in terms of espionage, of course, it's happening a lot. And, and again, you know, if you think of elections and what have you, it, it can really be used to try and influence uh, things or, or make services not available and what have you. And we, we've seen, you know, it's, it's been published uh, uh, quite well that when, when the Ukraine uh, invasion happened, there was, um, there was a lot of attack on the Ukrainian government as well. But they had time to prepare and they, they knew if, if bullets start flying, then we're probably going to have this online attack as well. And together with a number of their IT partners, Microsoft being one of them, they were able to really fend it off, but also move a lot of their applications to a different space. Uh, so they, they were still available. But it was, a, it was another example where the two happened at the same time in the physical world, but also in the, in the online world, there were uh, attacks. It's not always also uh, state actors because you have a lot of groups of activists that maybe they are sympathizing with Russia and they will join as well, of course, uh, targeting Ukraine. So it's not only about the state actor itself. Preparation, preparation. Well, yes. we'll keep that in mind. You're still listening to Threat Talks. Uh, my two guests here are Peter van Burgel, who is the CEO of Elm6, and Luca Cipriano, who is a Threat Intel Specialist at Ontwit. My name is Liu Jan Koning. I'm CTO of Ontwit. And today's subject is DDoS. Gentlemen, let's talk a bit about the Mirai botnet. I mean, it's it's an impressive thing. Uh, I read uh, research where um, there, there is uh, 600,000 uh, devices connected to this botnet, as far as we know. It's yes. very active today. Um, it is a focus on IoT devices. Well, Lucas is going to tell yeah. us what that is and how and how they did that, of course. Uh, it brought down the country of Liberia. Uh, it brought down Amazon, Twitter, uh, because they attacked some kind of DNS. Uh, mm -hmm. uh, Deutsche Tele Telekom was actually uh, uh, brought down its knees. So it's really effective as well. Um, it's, it's a scary one, right? So yeah, it's, can, it's you, can you one. tell us a little bit about this, so uh, the Mirai botnet? The peculiarity of this botnet is that it's uh, focused on uh, IoT devices um, and... Uh, uh, as we know, and probably more people know, the security on IoT devices is not like at a uh, top notch. Um, so what why? it exploits... Yeah, yeah, no, why? I, I don't <laughs> why? know. So, uh, why? for example, IoT devices are, of course, uh, uh, available for everybody. You can use it at your play, at your home, and also people that are not really highly technical can uh, use them and uh, configure them. And uh, like small things like, for example, changing default passwords. A lot of people, they don't do that. So we're talking about home routers, uh, maybe uh, solar panels, that's Yeah, we talk about all the IoT devices that have a Linux system uh, on, uh, on them. Um, so but, but yes, to your point there, your fridge, your thermostat, yes. oh, your, yes. uh, Sorry, uh, IoT your router, device, your... Uh, uh, yeah, because IoT device could also mean right, it's, my, right. it's my <laughs> control logic to, 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 to do my robotics yeah, stuff. Yeah, but it can be any, any... It could be a toy even from your... Any computer. device that is part of the Internet of Things, that they communicate yeah. with each yeah. other, communicate my car, outside. Yeah. Uh, could be a source uh, of a... Eventually, device. yes. Yes. Lights in your house. Or... Lights in your house and all, all these kind of things. So they're everywhere and they're protected by homeowners. Uh, yeah, they're protected by homeowners and most of the time when they're created, like uh, the default uh, credentials are really weak and nobody uh, changed the default credentials or almost nobody. Uh, so basically what the uh, Mirai botnet, uh, well, the Mirai malware, it's a strain of uh, malware, does, uh, it affects these devices and when a device is affected by this malware, uh, what it does is it starts to scan the internet uh, to find uh, any other vulnerable devices uh, or uh, misconfigured with default um, uh, weak uh, default password. And what it does then, it will communicate with uh, uh, the report server uh, where it will say, hey, we found this device, it's, uh, it can be a target. The report server will then communicate with the loading server giving the information about the device. And the loading server will then infect the device. And as you can imagine, this device then once infected will be part of the botnet. And what will it do? 
start to scan the internet again. So it's ref, it's it's a worm, self uh, replicating. Uh, it's quite quite easy. Uh, but the first start isn't all that sophisticated, and it's just like someone who had left admin admin password uh, basically on the router. Yeah, right? the, the yes. The the fun thing also is that the the source code of uh, Mirai uh, is uh, publicly available on uh, on uh, GitHub, so you can go there and take a look. And if you look at the source code, you have all the combination of username and password that they use to try to. Uh, you you can see it yourself, and they're they're really like uh, uh, weak passwords. Um, what leads to this problem is like, of course, most of the people, uh, they, they don't have like a good understanding of how IoT devices works. Uh, but like, for example, some people uh, can use protocols such as uh, UAPMP, uh, for example. Uh, I don't know if you know what is UAPMP, but it's like basically uh, plug and play your device. And this can open a port uh, automatically on your router if it's enabled on your router and then makes your new smart camera reachable from internet because you need to access it, but it's reachable from everybody. So then suddenly becomes a, a target. And you also see the, um, the, the, uh, the attackers, right? So now the source code is, um, is being um, shared. Uh, but there was another example in the news where actually uh, a, company, a bank was attacked or a company was attacked, uh, but they were publicly traded. And because they didn't mention, they are by law obliged to actually mention that they're being, uh, uh, being hacked and they didn't. So then the hackers, filed a complaint with the SEC to oh, say yeah, yeah. that the company didn't that's the triple uh, ransomware the, the triple ransomware so you <laughs> so you see you see them uh, so the, yeah. the, 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 the the they use these types of botnets to actually attack a company yeah. and then if you not follow the law or the rules they actually it's a sort of a double whammy they even put a complaint in as well so they're really putting a massive amount of pressure on you to uh, to deal with it back to your question about is there a business model well you know Multiple business models. Yeah, yeah there are multiple right business. Yeah. Like for example, <laughs> the, at the same time, the, the goal, right? Just the the, the yeah. on these people to actually <laughs> file a complaint because yeah. you're the attacker and they did not. But that's not the only thing because there are strains of Mirai that has been changed and instead of being used to uh, basically DDoS, they install um, a crypto miner on your device. Mm. So basically, you don't know, but you're borrowing uh, calculation power to let them uh, basically mine bitcoins. So, 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 so this DDoS, it, it, it's 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 like a a form of anything we see in the cybersecurity world, right? It's, I mean, because DDoS in itself, it would, you could argue this is not a cybersecurity problem in itself because of it's it's, called, it it's a band, a bandwidth. It's not trying to break in, but it actually is. Yeah, it is. And as we mentioned before, it's also not only about the bandwidth, but it's also uh, resources exhaustion. When uh, you go higher on level and you go on layer seven on the application and you find the flow in the application, uh, then that's not only about bandwidth. It's, also it's, a, about it's a tool in essence. And it started with brute force, uh, just a flooding network by a lot of data. Uh, and as we got on top of that through technology and services, it became more and more complex. And uh, and now it's not so much the size, but the complexity of it. And again, you need to figure out, uh, you need to lock the window and the door and your car and the garage. And uh, yeah, it's just... Uh, and, uh, sorry, just uh, one step back, because otherwise maybe it can be unclear for people. Uh, but uh, what happens when uh, these devices are infected and are part of the botnet, they are controlled by an attacker with a common and control server. That is the important part that we didn't mention, where the attacker can just communicate with all these devices and say, hey, attack this target. Yeah, that's so it basically really says, uh, yeah, go here and everybody go like a bunch of drones. Uh, to, yeah, to, and do But you mentioned that the, 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 the code's open source. So there's probably many smaller Mirai-like networks yeah. around them. So you don't, we, there's many attackers, many people yeah, who use it. Uh, probably many... every government, probably every uh, ransomware organization has a, yeah. or tries to get a Mirai bot. How do we defend ourselves from this? How, because because the, what, what strikes me here is that, um, um, the problem, uh, of course, the attacker is wrong, right? There's nothing we can do about it. We have those. But the source of the attack is not the same party as the, the one who suffers, right? So if you, you may be part of an attack without even knowing it, and probably the attacker will try to not let you know and, and, and not suffer from it too much because, they, hey, you, you send out more traffic, yes, but not so much that you cannot r no, run the course. internet anymore. But uh, if you suffer from it, yeah, the, the, the apparent attacker isn't really the attacker, of course, and you can also, you cannot patch it. I mean, you, uh, uh, 
if you are under attack from a Mira botnet, you cannot change the password of all those things or reboot no, no, your no, routers. No, no, no. Uh, th there are a lot of things that uh, can so be what done. Can from, we do? Yeah, all, all uh, a lot of things that can be done from different uh, kind of people. <laughs> For example, normal user with IoT devices. Uh, I would say just try to learn a bit better how to protect uh, your network. For example, if you don't know what UPnP is, don't enable it on your router. I would say uh, these kind of little things. Uh, from uh, of course uh, the company perspective that is attacked, there are solutions like there are. Uh, Firewalls have some uh, um, settings that can be tweaked to help uh, uh, mitigating some of these attacks. But there are also, uh, as you mentioned before, uh, cloud solutions that help mitigating these uh, these or attacks. IMP. Or organizations. Yes. Yeah, and, but 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 all of that is um, uh, all of that needs to happen, and all of it is preventive, sort of after the fact, right? So an attack is happening, yes. and you need to fend it off. But of course, these IoT devices they are being built. Somebody makes them. So there is a lot of uh, law and regulation uh, uh, being rolled out, specifically in, in Europe, uh, uh, around NIST 2, but also some of the, the other uh, regulations that are coming out that are also forcing the manufacturers of these types of equipments, whether it's your thermostat or your fridge, to actually make them more resilient and build security in. Right? If, you in, if, you, if, you're, if you're, uh, you're buying a new fridge and you, you fire it up, you're not thinking about, oh, let me check if there's an interface and I need to reset my password. But there may be an IoT device in there you're not even aware of that actually has weak protection. So yeah, Routers nowadays come with their Wi-Fi password pre-generated and it's unique yeah. for everyone. Eh? Exactly, yeah. So so there is there's law and regulation coming in. So governments are waking up to the fact that also from a manufacturing standpoint, we need to build in security by design rather than... And patch it if you find a flaw. That's, that's been always been the trouble with IoT. Yes. Eh? It's impossible to patch because there is no patch. What, how, how do you patch if there is no available? Eh? Absolutely. So that's a, that's, a, that's a good thing where regulation is really starting to help protect us as a user. Uh, because, like you say, it's impossible. How, how do you know? Right? Uh, nine out of ten times, you don't even know there is a password in there, or there's a connection to the internet. I always fear the day that all all solar panels, or like fifty percent of the solar panels of our country, are being controlled by a, a nation state <laughs> actor, and they flip the switch and they put them all down, and then we're out of. Or power. up, right? And they, they blow up the electricity yeah, the network. Whole, yeah. Or, yeah, yeah. So the, absolutely. So those are things where uh, it is it is essential that we have good guidelines and, of course, enforcement of those to make sure those IoT devices are safe as well. Let's get to the next uh, next uh, attack, uh, the HTTP2 rapid attack. Um, yeah, like I said, it's a protocol thing. Luca, enlighten us. What, what is yeah, that? Yeah, so this one is a relatively new um, attack. Um, I'm pretty sure around uh, 2023, well, last year, um, it, uh, uh, started to happen and basically um, it uh, exploits a flow in the HTTP2 um, uh, protocol. Uh, so the HTTP2 protocol basically it's allows... It's used for web browser, right? A modern it's, yes, version it's, of it's what used, we use uh, when we browse the web. Indeed, it's used to connect to uh, a website and it allows to uh, open uh, uh, several streams at the same time. What are streams? Uh, basically streams are, uh, let's say, um, part of the same connection that lets you load parts of the website, like for example, uh, HTML, uh, Java, Concurrently CSS, load different images. And they all happen at the same time in HTTP2. Um, what is the function that is exploited? Is that when you open a stream, uh, of course, if you don't visit anymore the website, you close it or you stop uh, the, the, the loading of the website, uh, the client is allowed to send a reset for the stream. So it's going to close the stream that it's open. So that, that what the attackers do, they start to they start a stream and they send immediately a reset. And they do it like continuously for uh, thousands uh, of, uh, of uh, streams, immediately open and close, open and close, open and close. And uh, normally this is something that a server uh, could 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 manage uh, and there's uh, in some settings also like a, a kind of um uh, a, a default maxim, maximum number of streams that you can open, but because these streams are closed immediately, uh, it will never reach that uh, the target of maximum uh, streams that are uh, allowed. And what happened? This creates a, a backlog of work on the on the server, and the server uh, exhausts the resources. So this one is not a volumetric attack, but it exhausts the resources. So the yeah, CPU the most, sky's most high. Yeah, there's more more targeted, uh, more sophisticated. Yeah, that the, the, the one that are more yeah. more sophisticated, and it's quite difficult to uh, also this kind of attack to to block them because that can be legitimate traffic. How do you understand if this is legitimate or is malicious? Because people they connect to your website, right, and they open streams. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah, so it's uh, so the the complexity is partially the technology being complex, but also this. Yeah? So you they start to leverage normal behavior 
but uh, but in a in a bad way. Yes, and that's why it's very difficult to uh, because we talked about the fact that some. And in the older days specifically, but some equipment still, they will just give up and let you through, which is wrong, right? You should really keep the gate closed. But this is another one where actually, if you start to close down all of this traffic, you may close a lot of, you may close a lot of legitimate traffic, whereas actually <laughs> it's somebody else causing yeah. that. So again, it's a way of actually bringing your service down, but you're almost doing it yourself if you start to disconnect some of these sessions. There's so again, it's, trade. yeah, it's it's almost, uh, I don't want to use the word that much, but it's it's almost an elegant solution right but it's of course for nefarious reasons so it's still uh, it's still bad but uh, it's very sophisticated it's a, so it's the nature of the protocol that is used in a proper way no way to f to see the difference between a real connection and a fake connection and therefore yeah what can you do well th th there are s some ways mm -hmm. um, for example a solution in this specific case might be having the server counting the number of reset that it receives mm -hmm. and you will say like okay after so many so it will look into the HTTP session then. It will actually uh, have to inspect all the traffic? Uh, yes, well, uh, this happens in uh, one single TCP. So the connection is one, and then all the streams are open in the same connection that is established. Yeah, so, oh, and then so you need a solution. Well, the server needs to know and count how many streams mm -hmm. are open. Yeah, I imagine and you have to do that on all the bandwidth on your networks, right? Well, we don't. <laughs> we, as OMSIC specifically, we don't operate at that level, mm -hmm. right? So we it's are not, um, uh, we're not. All your customers would have to. But our customers, our yes. customers do. And, and then on top of that, by Dutch law or by European law, we're not even allowed to look in the traffic that is traversing up. So we couldn't even help in this particular one. So this is really something that has to happen yeah. between the client and the the server. Yeah. And there is again, there's some work being done also mainly on the European level to have sort of new certificates being uh, set up to to do that trust relationship between the server and the client. But again, the difficulty here is that it it is it is sort of a legitimate way of using. The protocol, and it's uh, we haven't thought of it yet or, or solved yet how we distinguish between the various traffic and the and, and the to trace back to the solution because maybe uh, there's somebody that has questions like I count the the number of streams reset and then uh, well and then when uh, it uh, goes over the the, the the maximum number of streams that you that you want it will send a, a go away frame which basically close the TCP connection which this it's a trade also because you might uh, set up uh, and tweak it in the wrong way and then maybe you you uh, disconnect block, your own uh, customer yeah, yeah you block legitimate traffic so there's always a trade off uh, with uh, uh, yeah with this kind of solutions but there are also like third parties in the cloud for example that they offer solution to help uh, with uh, with this can't we know the sources keep track of those or, or, or it's yeah, really it's always, uh, geo it's, IP blocking. It's really easy to change a source. Mm -hmm. Like uh, the source, uh, I mean, yes, you can block it, but uh, like changing an IP address, uh, it's trivial for an attacker. It's yeah, we just trivial. talked about the botnet, right? Yeah, so exactly. as you said, there is one command and control person that may control six, seven, a million, yeah. uh, six, seven hundred thousand, or a million devices. So first of all, you have to have to look at many, many IP addresses. So it takes a long time to investigate and how to do that. So that's already depleting resources in researching it. But then, yeah, the other piece is that you can easily spoof those addresses. So even yeah. if you if you know which it is, it may be you, but you may not even be yeah, aware even you're are, attacking even something. Even in the Netherlands, I mean, there, uh, you, there's, there's uh, ISPs that allow you to use a, a source IP that belo yeah. doesn't belong to you. Yes. Huh? And I mean, your uh, regular home connection won't allow that. They will simply block traffic yeah. if they see it's not coming from your IP. So that will um, mitigate that a little bit. Because yeah. it, what, what, I mean, if, if you can do that, yeah, well, I can send a packet. Nobody will ever know where it came from. Well, it's it's part of the challenge we have with the internet at large, right? So when it when it was uh, when TCP/IP, the underlying protocol, uh, was uh, invented or really uh, got adopted, and 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 we we got to the internet as we know it today, none of all of that was great with the idea of oh, now we can communicate with everybody globally and we can start sharing information really openly, uh, this, this university uh, research uh, mindset. And, and basically, there was no security by design. So a lot of the issues we're seeing is basically uh, that flaw, that fundamental flaw that when they invented it, it was invented to share and be open and not so much to make it really secure. There were no criminals in university back then, huh? And uh, those it's those those, you know. those those are your words, but uh, wow. no, but but it's uh, a lot of the the security issues we're seeing today is based on the fact that yeah, it, it it wasn't designed way back in the day. I think they couldn't even imagine something like the IoT, the Internet of Things. Would they even think that devices will communicate themselves with each other at a certain point? No. 
That's, yeah. Oh, it's a, it's a, it's a whole different topic, maybe to think about. You know, you, trying to imagine the future. But to your point, yeah, they 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 couldn't think of that, and they they thought also when they set up uh, the IP space, yeah, the number of IP addresses that are available, yeah, that it, it would never be depleted. <laughs> well, here we are. Well, we we're, don't have any. We're out of IP addresses, so yeah, it's. Uh, yeah, or the or the RAM on a PC of sixty four K. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Gentlemen, it's time for uh, the treasure hunt. So if you like the shirt that uh, Luca is wearing, pay attention right now. Um, <laughs> uh, there is a code, and I'll repeat it once more once I've said it. It's 012423. <laughs> and if you send that to code at threat-talks.com, uh, uh, you, you can you actually, uh, the first 200 people who do that, uh, starting right now, uh, actually uh, get a, a T-shirt in an icebox uh, sent to you. So... Um, uh, uh, take advantage of that. Uh, the code is 012423. That brings us to our next subject, and that's about the DNS reflection amplification, uh, the, the the snowball like uh, yeah. uh, attacks. Uh, the, Luca, this so, one is a, is a, what, is a how does that work? As as before, like we mentioned already, this also is uh, uh, well using legitimate uh, traffic that is difficult to distinguish from uh, non-legitimate. Uh, it, it can use different protocols like DNS, NTP, uh, etc. Uh, I will talk about the the DNS because uh, it's uh, I think it's the, it's the easiest one and maybe most people are familiar with how DNS work. Um, so basically, um, what uh, how does this work? Like you have an attacker. Let's think about a botnet again and attack communicates with the botnet and says, okay, you whole device are going to send a lot of DNS requests to hold these DNS servers, but your IP address is not your IP address. Your IP address is spoofed and is going to be the IP address of the target. So when the DNS server receives all those requests, they're going to reply, but they're not going to reply to the devices. They're going to reply to the target because the DNS server, they think, that that's uh, the, who's sending the traffic and the traffic and basically the attacker gets uh, uh, overwhelmed with uh, with answer and this can be uh, amplificated uh, by uh, uh, requesting uh, basically more information like for example with DNS you can send the DNS any request which will return all the information of a spe specific domain like MX records, uh, A records and everything and so the attacker sends a small packets and the results in a huge packet. Um, if you think about it is like if uh, I call a, a pizza place and I order a pizza and I say I would like to have a, a, a margarita with no pineapple please uh, and uh, then it says but please call me for back at my number and just confirm my order and I do this with thousands of pizza places, but I give the number of the target. So the target will start to receive a lot of phone calls from all these pizza places and will be overwhelmed. So yeah. Uh, yeah, <laughs> I'm still thinking about this pineapple thing. Yeah, no, well, no, that's, I'm, I'm uh, that's, 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 that's uh, unfortunately, well, I can't do anything about that. <laughs> no, let's, let's, let's not go there. <laughs> we all love pizza, Luca. You're not the only one. Yeah, yeah, no pineapple. <laughs> <laughs> no pineapple. Yeah, but it's all another right. example of uh, you. You touched on it earlier, where first of all, the IP address can be faked. Right, and this may be you may not be uh, in the example of the pizza place. You may, as the pizza place, you're not aware you're part of a scam, yeah. but you're still calling somebody back or you're sending somebody a pizza. So they may be called or they may receive a million pizzas, and of course yes. wanting to be paid for it. If you uh, ask to pay in cash, so it it may really cause a problem for somebody, and that happens in in real terms physically. But again, this also happens online. Yeah. So it's 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 uh, relatively easy for the attacker to remain hidden. And, and use you, me, everybody to actually uh, yeah. Yeah. hurt somebody else. also is a cost thing. Eh? I mean, if you are an attacker, of course, your infrastructure to start the attack costs money. But if you can yeah. send small packets and it will lead, it will be amplified somewhere yeah. else. And then You're using somebody else's uh, infrastructure to amplify it. So. And because it's also small... It's a regular protocol, by the way. I mean, DNS yeah, is supposed to yes. give you a large answer. Yeah, yeah. 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 exactly. So but it's also small resources. Uh, if it's us being leveraged here, it's also small resources for us. But because there's thousands mm. of those small resources all of a sudden becomes a big problem for the target. All right, let's see if we got some questions, uh, Luca. Oh yes, sure. Let me take a look. Um, yes, we do have a question. Um, somebody is asking, as a medium-sized business, uh, what can I do to protect myself uh, against uh, DDoS? Anybody wants to 
<clears throat> well, I'll, uh, I'll give it a shot. So we earlier already, we talked a little bit about this, I think. So first of all, preparation still, right? So the fact that you're a medium-sized organization doesn't, doesn't uh, make you different. Uh, the problem uh, a lot of times is that it's not a specific target that's being chosen, but it's uh, you're either part of the resources being used to attack somebody else. So that's part of what you try, need to try and prevent. But of course, also you may become the target for whatever reason. So first of all, uh, preparing in understanding uh, your own network and having uh, a partner like Ontoit or others that can help you secure your network, firewalling, uh, patch, uh, all these things. Um, and if that's still not enough, then of course you can start to look at more larger scale services. So there's many cloud type services that you could leverage uh, to work on this. I talked about backups already, so make yeah. sure you have your backups in place and also know how to restore them. Yeah, make sure you don't never have to pay ransomware. Huh? And and the, then the last piece is because of that, you should also really practice. So if you're being ransomware, whether it's through DDoS or through something else, have have a scenario ready that you've practiced. Yeah. Say, Some oh, playbooks. if this happens, we know we need a war room yes. and we need to call the police maybe, or we need yeah. to have a negotiator, etc. Uh, I would I would add also redundancy on some of the yes. devices that will help. So if one fails, then you have a failover to the next device that might might help as well. So again, you know, uh, just to repeat myself, but it's it's so it's not the fact that you're a small or medium sized company that you you're off the hook. But I of course appreciate that you have different resources at your disposal than when you're a larger company. But in essence, the the, the measures are the same, just at a different the more scale. money you make online, the more you have to be prepared. Absolutely, yeah. We have quite a few questions. Um, uh, I'm sorry, Take I was just speak, yeah. <laughs> um, sorry, we can't answer all of them, but. Um, uh, can you discuss the concept of DDoS extortion and how organizations can respond to it? This is an interesting one, actually. Yeah, we touched yeah. upon extortion a little bit. Uh, my my uh, uh, primary uh, response is uh, never pay. And the reason is, um, next, if you do, uh, well, it not only costs you money, but next time you will, uh, they, they will know how to find you. They know you are sensible to that, so. They know you pay. It, it, yeah, they know you pay, <laughs> and it will, it will happen and happen again, unless you, re and it's really hard to, uh, to uh, it makes you a big target for the next time. I mean, unless you are going bankrupt or so, I can imagine, I mean, that, that's a terrible trade-off, but uh, yeah, anything to add or? or well, I'm, Maybe I'm, um, realistic no, I'm, I'm, uh, I'm with you. I'm with you to say never pay, but it's easy to say when, when, well, you're, <laughs> not an attack, when right? you're not uh, being ransomed. Yeah. yeah. Um, sure. but it's, uh, so, uh, but, but uh, princip principally I agree. And again, I keep on saying it, it's, it's about this preparation and, yes. and practice. Um, and, and maybe just to explain a little bit there, when you're sort of ransomed with EDOS, it basically means uh, your services are being rendered uh, unavailable. So if yeah. you're this ticket example we talked about earlier, you can no longer sell your tickets. And if that happens mm -hmm. often enough, you go out of business. But you could also think of a bank. A uh, bank is, uh, is selling trust to a large extent. And if uh, they can't keep their networks up or, or their applications up and, and, and their, their customers are being hit with it all the time, then you lose the trust and you may lose a lot of business. Um, so that's what so DDoS can do. Yeah, it's it's really uh, it's really trying to extort. It, it happens you. a lot. Let's be honest. I mean, a lot of people pay uh, yeah. today. So the, the bigger uh, money there is to be made of extortion, you, the better you need to prepare. We got uh, one more small question. Uh, one more small question. Let me check. Um, I think this one is a nice one. Uh, it's a good one. Um, will AI have impact on how DDoS attacks are being performed? Well, I mean, uh, the, is AI going to have impact? Uh, is AI not going to have, have impact, impact on, on everything, right? So yeah. I think the short answer is yes. The question, of course, is how. Uh, the current uh, models that we know of are very much based on, on language models, uh, but they are also very good at seeing patterns. Yeah. So by throwing a lot of data at it, uh, AI is really good at uh, seeing patterns. So that's where AI may come in to, uh, to start yeah. DDoS attacks, of course, but also to fight them off. Yeah, I, I would say they're really good at finding implement for fighting them off exactly. uh, mostly. Uh, so specifically, those so, sort of smaller ones that you may not see from your s operating center. I or think it's what? both. I mean, we used to have humans that uh, that uh, that were attacking yeah. and humans were fending it off. Then we had automation that attacking. We're going to have a off. machine attacking machines. Yeah, <laughs> machi yeah. yeah. Uh, don't bring a bring a knife to a gunfight, basically. So no, and and course, the attacker will use it. I mean, and and I think about what we mentioned before that is uh, really difficult to distinguish legi legitimate traffic from yeah. non-legitimate. I think AI will be a good one to help in that. But again, AI also needs large, large, large yeah. uh, yeah. resources, yeah. right? Yeah. So, yeah. so it's it's not uh, it's not just oh uh, 
Magically, it's going to solve. Let's connect your GPT <laughs> to our firewall and then That's our goal. The thing, to, um, <laughs> the thing I would, would want to add on AI, though, is that there is also some rumors about AI getting uh, down with math. So uh, apparently they cannot do math at this point, but if they can, and there's even some rumors that it can learn something over here and then apply it over there. And that's where I think AI is also going to cause big problems mm-hmm. in, in trying to secure because you need to start to think about uh, encryption and all these things that, that uh, are at risk. So, yes, it's going to have an impact, but uh, what exactly, of course, is, is remains in to be seen. infancy still. Yeah. 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 All right. Gentlemen, um, it's cheap to attack, hard to uh, defend. Huh? That's... Uh, yes. that's uh, it's uh, it's 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 big. It's all around us, yeah. and we're doing a in, in, doing a decent job most of the time, I think, in uh, fending them off because they happen m- much more often than you see them in the news t- 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 today. And yeah. there's many initiatives and products that actually are the cause of it not yeah. being on top of mind constantly. But it's really there. Huh? So that's uh, and, uh, and 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 if I take one thing from this conversation, uh, well, prepare, make sure you have your measures in yes. place, do practice, patch your stuff, and at home, please change your default password. <laughs> I would mention. Yes. Uh, a website that you can go at for free it's shodan s-h-o-d-a-n um, and there you can uh, basically look at yourself and it will tell you hey you have this equipment and if it's this random password uh, default password if it's if it's the case so you can simply do that and then uh, yeah. uh, then you're there all right um before i explain a little bit more about the uh, the um, uh, the data sheets and stuff that we have. Um, let me thank our guests, first of all, uh, for today. Um, Peter, thank you very much. Uh, Luca, thank you very much thank you. for all your very insights nice. and conversation. Um, thank you, listeners, uh, for joining uh, this thread talk of today. We really appreciate it. Did you like it? Well, please like this video, like this podcast, subscribe to it so you're you're sure that you don't miss the next one. The cadence of this uh, thread talk is as follows. Every month we will uh, uh, do a, uh, a session like this, a thread talk like this. And then in the weeks to come, week after week, we'll have a short one that uh, uh, deep dives into one specific part of it. So, for example, next week, um, we will have uh, more details on the Mirai botnet. So if you want to know everything about it, make sure to subscribe. Um, You can also, um, we are... um, um, uh, very uh, curious to all feedback that you have so please let us know you can reach us at uh, thread-talks.com or email at team at thread-talks.com uh, and first uh, the, 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 the feedback we also reward with one of those cool t-shirts if you forgot the code there's another way to get one um, so how do you spell team <laughs> Not the name. <laughs> team. <laughs> Not team the name. <laughs> <laughs> nah, just exactly. joking. <laughs> yeah, exactly. So, uh, from our security operation center floor, uh, thank you very much and hope to see you next time. Thank you for listening to Thread Talks, a podcast by Ontoit Cybersecurity and M6. Did you like what you heard? Do you want to learn more? Follow Thread Talks to stay up to date on the topic of cybersecurity. Thread Talks.